a warm welcome back. Uh, we hope you had a great lunch for 20 minutes and all the energy is on screen for Alex Shadat. He's from Colombia and from Canada as well. And he wrote a book, Trusted Networks, and all your questions are going to be answered in this half an hour. But first of all, let me introduce you to Machtelt Huber. She's the director of the Institute of Positive Health. <laughs> and she is the founder, actually, of the concept of positive health. So we have positive health, we have trusted networks, we have the Netherlands, and we have Colombia. How is this all connected, Machtel Tuber? Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's one year ago, we, I was sitting here in the studio with you, and you interviewed me. Yes. And I told you that I had started the elaborated a new concept of health, health as the ability to adapt and self-management. And I told I did together with a man from Colombia and Canada, Alex Yadat. Mm -hmm. And during uh, 10 years, we hadn't really met. And then I met you in Canada. And, and it turned out that I had elaborated it into positive gezondheid. And you had elaborated it into trusted networks. And I saw this complementary. I saw that in Holland we have this, this meaningfulness really on the personal level. And you had developed a trust concept for the community. And I thought this is really the best connection we can have. And from the moment I told you about the trusted yes. networks, people came to me and said, yeah. this is really this interesting. This is the missing we link or the connecting piece. So we studied your book and we're so happy that you're here. But I'm very eager to hear what you're going to tell. And yes, I'll see that. So the introduction is um, done by Machtelt Huber. But I think the most dominant question for all of us is how we can implement this book. <laughs> well, that is the question. <clears throat> and for that, the key is in the two words, trust and, network. and networks. And trust understood as a social emotion, listen to that, a social emotion. Trust is the emotion we get mm -hmm. when we believe that it is possible to do something that otherwise might seem impossible. Okay? And, uh, and belief, in this case, allows us to see possibilities that otherwise would be invisible. You see, we tend to say we have to see to believe. Mm -hmm. In this case, we have to flip it. We have, we have to, flip to it. believe to see. And for all the uh, people who are watching, what is interesting about Alex Haddad is that he is not only this, a physician, but he is also a game changer. So in Colombia, he really changed the system. And I think that's very interesting for us in the Dutch to learn from that. Well, How did you manage to do it with those two words? Well, um, in fact, it was done by the people of Colombia. Mm -hmm. And uh, a wonderful group, because a network is a group of people who are connected to each other. That's what a network is. And uh, um, I was very fortunate to find such a group in Bogota, in the capital of the country. It's about seven to eight million people. Mm -hmm. And there... There is this wonderful human being. His name is Mauricio Serra. He is the CEO of an organization which is called Compensar. And Compensar is one of several uh, entities in the country uh, that receives money from the government to provide health services to the population. And this man uh, leads this organization that has 1.3 million people. And we launched the book before this one that was titled um, Unleashing a Pandemic of Health. A Pandemic a of pandemic Health. Of and health. that was before we had that COVID-19. That was in 2017. Okay. In 2017, we had been working with the uh, Colombian Federation of Coffee Growers, which is the biggest uh, non-for-profit organization in rural areas in the world. Okay? All the coffee growers of Colombia came together. And we had worked... Uh, with that organization to see if we could spread health. Spread health spread like health. a virus. Ah, imagine contagious health. Contagious yeah. health. Besmetelijke. Yes. So when we launched the book, A Common Friend, and, and we called this group A Family by Choice. 
A we have by chosen choice, it's each about other. The network, yes. And Max said, is my sister by choice. Yes. So we have chosen each other as siblings because we but can have families. It, it sounds so um, logical in a way. Uh, that it's about the emotion, it's about trusting one another, it's about that you have any position or no position at all because you want to work together to something that's, to say, is uh, giving a contribution to the greater good. Yeah. Because that's the common thing, the common umbrella. But how did you make, let's say, work appointments? Because we are in the Netherlands looking for those kinds of solutions, maybe you can bring them over from Colombia to here. Yeah, it would be wonderful because what happened in Colombia was that that group, and I, I was very privileged to be able to become part of the group, brought the best examples from around the world together into the city as, as if the city uh, could become a, an incubator of the future. So what if we use a city as a place where we can try different things that hadn't, done, hadn't been done before uh, and see if we can create a different reality. And that's what that group was doing. And, uh, and they understood very, very quickly that trust was the essential ingredient. Without trust, we cannot change things. And we need trust more than ever now. And the pandemic of COVID-19 is showing us that we need more trust. Mm -hmm. You see, we... we some but more trust in the system, more trust in at all levels. Our we need leaders, to start more trust, with trust in ourselves as in people ourselves. first. We need to trust each other, and we need to trust that together we can achieve things that otherwise would be impossible. Okay, so so trust again as this belief, and and the word belief is very important. Okay, uh, is is the belief that together we could shift the way in which we see our lives and, 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 and reality in general. And this concept of health is very important in that way because it has allowed us to shift the emphasis from disease, mm -hmm. which disease. has been usually the main area yeah. of interest when we talk about health, to the ability to adapt yes. and to self-manage. So when we, focus on, when we focus on adaptability, it, lots of possibilities open. Okay? because you can even have the label of a disease and be healthy at the same time. Okay? And if we believe that, again, I want we to emphasize... We have Angelista here sitting at the chair of uh, Machtold, and he was also telling us that because he is um, uh, a very strong patient uh, for strong disease, but he was feeling happy. I think that's what yeah. the, the, the connective between the two of you is the, the concept, the describing of the concept of health the ability to adapt and self-management. And that's the interesting part as well of the whole story. Exactly. And that verb, to adapt, is very powerful because it takes us back to um, the survival of the fittest. Mm. And, and the pandemic, again, of COVID has made it more real than ever that it's not the strongest or the smartest who would survive, but those who would be able to change and to adapt to a rapidly changing okay. environment. And so adaptability. on the individual scale or in the scale at, of at working levels, together at, at, at all, all levels? levels. And, also by and working for together. the health professionals who are watching us now, uh, and now could be in real time or later on, this is crucial because the pandemic found us uh, in trouble. We already, as health professionals, had pre-existing conditions, you see. Uh, so we need ourselves as health professionals to adapt more than ever. And, and we responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. And in many cases, we put our lives on the line. So we contributed to the adaptability of our communities and our societies from a physical perspective. Because you see, health as the ability to adapt uh, focuses not only on the physical, but also on the psychological and the social. So yes, we responded to the pandemic emphasizing the physical. Now we need to focus on the psychological, the mental, the emotional. The mental, yeah, the, this whole morning the it was about the mental uh, health of all people also to... Um, but beginning with ourselves, you begin, see, because yes. we tend to look at health as, uh, as, as a third person thing. It's the health of the community, the health of our patients, the health of the families, etc. And it's very rare 
that we think of our own health in first person and ideally in first person plural, plural yeah. our health mm -hmm. and how to become an example. The best way to lead, Albert Schweitzer used to say, there are three ways to lead. Through good example, through good example, and through good example. So we have an opportunity now, more than ever, uh, to become an example of adaptability and to use ourselves uh, as a living lab to learn how to deal with these challenges that will be inevitable in our lives, at all levels, again, mm -hmm. from the at individual to the world. It's not just small communities. We are talking about us as a species, yes. as it's, humans. It, I think it's very inspiring. That's also the, way, the reason why Machtelt Huber and Alex Schadat are working together and find uh, themselves as brother and sister in uh, getting a better health, public health for everyone. Um, but I have, I'm also this journalist who's asking critical questions. Mm -hmm. So we have trusted networks, we have your inspiring story, we even have the results in Colombia, in Bogota. But the problem in the Netherlands is money, financial stuff, insurance. How can we believe um, um, in, in ourselves and organize all, and, and, and let's say follow all the tips you gave us? And then we have okay. no money. Well, uh, this requires um, going beyond the money side. In Colombia, our colleagues had a big, big challenge. They had about only $500, about 430 euros per person per year mm. to offer everything, including transplantations, intensive care and everything, okay, to 1.3 million people. And this is a fraction of the investment that the Netherlands makes on its own population. In the Netherlands, it's over 3,000 euros per person per year, over 4,000, depending on how you uh, count it. So we're talking about eight times less this group had when we adjusted to the ability to purchase things. Mm -hmm. So these are not just Colombian pesos. This is adjusted to what we can do with that money. So we standardize uh, uh, the amount. And when this group uh, started to work together, they said, we have three options. And that would be my suggestion be a good example. to the group in, in the Netherlands. They said, we have three options. We either keep doing the same thing mm -hmm. as we have been doing it, but then we'll commit suicide. Two, let's introduce small changes, mm -hmm. hoping for the best, the conclusion for them was that that would just delay their death. They would go bankrupt very quickly. Or three, we need to try something else. And we need to try something radically different. And that's what they decided to do. So, and they bet first on trust again. And leadership, leadership. This is probably the most scarce resource in the universe. We have lots of good administrators and managers. We have very few leaders. Mm -hmm. And by leadership, I mean adaptive, adaptive leadership. Again, the word adaptation with leadership is the ability to um, change in response to the challenges that life presents to you and to enable people to show the best version of themselves. You mm -hmm. understand? It's how to enable the best of people to, 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 to come out. They did that. And the, the most beautiful thing is that they were facing the same challenges we are facing in the Netherlands or in Canada now or in any other is country in the really world. Is it really the same? Yes, exactly the so same. So there are structures, not trust, there are not trust, no trust. People, you see the, the government Systems thinking that people together. would be ripping them off and, and take advantage of, of them. Mm -hmm. Clinicians and dissatisfied thinking that they are not important and anymore. And between nature and the providers, healthcare yeah. and social well-being. The providers uh, disaffected and tired and, and the public um, suspicious of everything. And, and they decided to break this. Mm -hmm. And they said, we need to spend time talking to each other and realizing. So again, the basis is trust, the trust, the trusted networks. Yeah. And it's interesting because I believe you immediately that the um, uh, situations are the same. Talking about the Netherlands, talking about Colombia, Bogota. A radical different way of dealing with things. Can you give us some examples? Yes. 
So, and by radical, I mean, let's go to the root. You see, radical comes from root. It's not to put things on the surface like little band-aids. We have to go to the root of the issue. And the issue is money, unfortunately, because the health system has become a branch of the financial sector. What counts is whether the books are balanced. Yes. So every player is worried about uh, money, unfortunately, or fortunately. But the good thing about that is that we know what the game is about. So they, uh, and, and again, all the credit goes to the group on the ground doing the work. Okay? I just had the opportunity to, to engage as part of their You network. don't have to be so modest, but we understand now that the workers on, yes. in the fields... So the, they sat the together. The civil servants, let's say, they, we have a word for that in, the, in Dutch, it's civil servants. Yeah, so they sat together. Uh, Mauricio, the leader of the group, brought the leaders of 36 organizations together. This is crucial. This is not just a small group. These are 36 groups with their interests and incentives, usually in conflict. And they said, okay, could we come up with a way that would allow us to achieve our goals, even though we have different interests. And, uh, and they made deals amongst themselves. The crucial one was to make the outcome uh, inevitable. So they said, could we, for example, um, shift 90% of uh, the activities of the system to the community? Can we remove yeah, things yeah, yes. from the hospitals yes. to the community? They created then uh, these uh, outpatient facilities throughout the city. They divided the city in three sections and they started to experiment with different ways of doing things in the three different places. And they said, could we remove 90% of the pressure from the hospitals by doing things in the community? And of course, the hospitals were worried because yeah. they might lose People power. People don't have they, education. They may lose power as lose well. Power. We're not that important anymore. Would we lose our budget? The government said you would not, okay? Uh, could we then offer resources for 20% less than it would cost us normally? And they agreed to create packages of services together. And then they recognized that homes can play a very important role. So they created the hospital at home program. Wow. And they could divert people from the emergency rooms straight into their homes and provide them with solutions at home that otherwise would only be needed in the hospitals. And they realized that hospitals are good for five things and only five things, okay? And they made sure that the hospitals could do that. And they also realized that you needed this network approach. So they created these coordinating centers with liaison people, with liaison mm -hmm. professionals, mm -hmm. link mm -hmm. people in each of the 36 organizations talking to each other one person, so they became like a family exchanging tips. What works here? Let's wow. make sure that the rest of the so network... Also new jobs, like... Uh, new professions. New professions, like the liaison officer. Yes, and those people became very, very important because they were the, the facilitators of the flow of new knowledge wow. that was generated by this network. And, um, and then we had the opportunity to introduce the concept of health as an ability. And, uh, and uh, if I have something I could claim credit for was for challenging them to believe that they could be treated like a country. Okay, if you have 1.3 million people, mm -hmm. uh, this is bigger many times than Iceland, for example, okay, or Luxembourg, uh, the size of Estonia. And these are members of the OECD. Okay, the Organization uh, uh, for uh, Economic Cooperation. Yes. Uh, Colombia was about to enter the OECD at the time. So this resonated with them. And we said, what would happen if we treat you like a country? If we treat and, you like a country. It's interesting, huh? And this is yes. just a group of people serving 1.3 million people within a city of 7 to 8 million people. And they said, we'll go for it. So we took indicators of the OECD, exactly the same metrics, because this is very important for, yes, for, yes, for yes. decision makers. Making a common I want goal. to see, I want to see and I want to measure, okay, because yes. we are in an era of dataism. We okay. want data, we want data, okay, we'll give yeah. you data. Yeah. And we started to collect data on exactly the same indicators of the OECD and we added self-reported health. Self-reported health means and I would like to ask those who are watching us now, 
uh, to answer this question, it's a magical question, is in general, how would you regard your health? Is it poor, fair, good, very good, or excellent? Is it poor, fair, good, very good, or excellent? So think about it, okay? If you say my health is good, very good, or excellent, we would consider that as positive health, which is another point of connection yes, with the approach yes, in yes, the yes. Netherlands. If you say your health is poor or fair, your health would be negative. And we have 4,000 plus, more than 4,000 publications looking at self-reported health as an indicator. Mm -hmm. And this is incredible. You see, uh, it can predict the survival of people with cancer even better than oncologists could or lab tests. So we started to look at self-reported health. So you make that as, as an as, instrument. As an indicator. As an indicator, and you make it important because you really believe in it, and there is evidence underlying. Yeah, because underlying. then we yes. shifted the, pressure, the, yeah. the power to the people, to the yeah. community. We say, tell us how healthy you feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we ask people, why do you feel your health is positive, or why is it negative? And what could we do to switch your health from negative to positive because your mortality increases three times if you say your health is poor or fair, just by answering that question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. compared with your peers, or to stay uh, in positive health as we view it. And the OECD countries look at that indicator as well. And by the way, it doesn't cost money to ask this question. No. It takes about 30 seconds to mm -hmm. ask it and to get an answer. So we started surveying people, thousands of people, uh, and to try to align the work of this network with self-reported health. At the end of, of our process, uh, we discovered that more than 88% of the people in that 1.3 million uh, 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 people community had positive health. The Netherlands that year was at 76.1%. I don't think we use self-reporting as a no, regular no, little bit. The country uses it. A lot of groups use it, but then we tend to push it yes. to one side because yeah. people are telling us this. That, that's important. Because, because it's people telling us how they feel. And at that time, Colombia, this group achieved 88 plus, 88.6 percent of positive health. The Netherlands, 76. We are talking about 12% yeah, yeah. more. Difference, yes. This is not mm -hmm. trivial for a fraction of the investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we discovered another very important thing. And, and that is that 90% of what people need to be healthy is not within the medical, the healthcare system. That should exactly be my question, because that's what the, the, uh, the theory of positive health also exactly. tells us. That, that yeah. brought us even That's, closer together. Yeah, the bro brother and sisterhood <laughs> were, again, yeah. stronger and connected. But how can we use that in our thinking of how we should make people more healthier or make public health more important or get rid of all this system uh, thinking? Okay, uh, by understanding that this uh, is not a threat because the okay. fear, fear, fear becomes then an obstacle. People, uh, we are afraid as humans to change. And we would do everything in our power not to change until we realize that if we don't change, we die. Mm. Okay, in other words, change or die. Yeah? So how can we make change easier is the question. Not the most difficult thing to do. And that was part of what this approach allowed. Just by, by lowering your guard you know you're not alone, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Not feeling alone Gives is very little important. A little bit comfort you feel, to people. Uh, and, and, and in Spanish, uh, we, we don't talk about trust, we talk about confianza, confianza. which is confidence, yeah. which is a Latin word that begins with con. Con is with, with. Mm, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone. You're doing things with each other. Yeah. So Same as everybody can... Um, bring in and give a contribution, which also contribute is also a Latin word. Contribute. Yes. You Communicate. Communicate. Connect. Yes. It's everything so all these come. words, okay, help us deal with our fears, fear of failure. What if we don't achieve our goals? What if my budget disappears? What if I become less important? What if my work is not the okay, uh, the most uh, celebrated one. And, and by shifting into complicity, 
This is a very important word. Then the question is, how much can we get away with mm -hmm. by working together? Yes, and how much can we push the envelope together? So, so this requires, in a way, um, uh, a conviction that together we are better off. Yes, together we're better off. Um, we have five minutes left. Um, and there are two questions. One is uh, the 36 organizations from the start who came together. Uh, what was the variety of those organizations? Were those only medical and, and social welfare organizations or also the police or uh, housing companies? Okay, so uh, imagine a country and the healthcare system of a country. So they have hospitals and suppliers and healthcare professionals and patients and, um, and uh, provide labs, the usual within a system. The beauty of Compensar, which is the, the, the mother organization, is that they serve four and a half million people My who are affiliated with 96,000 companies in Bogota. Because by law in Colombia, a portion of your salary goes every month to a pool. And uh, a company that has, let's say, 10,000 employees decides where the money that each employee contributes every month, uh, where to put it. So four and a half million people have put their money into Compensar. Mm -hmm. And what they do is to provide social services as well. And they are focusing on well-being and they see health as a component of well-being. Not the other That's way also around. That's interesting, yes. Not the other way around, because in 1948, when the WHO defined health as a state of complete physical, mental, yes, yes, and yes, social yes, well-being... Yes, yes, where Machtel Tuber started her verwundering and curiousness about what are we doing, yeah. especially as a physician, in your small room, and each and every five minutes there is a new patient coming in. Yeah, you have to okay. diagnose. <laughs> no, but he was working on it as well. So yes, that's so that's the connection. Yeah. yeah, and that nobody could be healthy with the WHO definition. This is why the contribution of health as an ability changed the game. Yeah. So, uh, but they are very interested in well-being. So this entity, Compensar, is also very much connected with the government social services. And we applied many of these principles in very poor communities of Bogota. And we even engage children as young as seven wow. in asking and answering mm -hmm. the question by themselves. And we have published a book after this, which is titled Sustainable Wellbeing for All. And these children were the healthiest and, and, and happiest of all groups. And then things start to deteriorate when they become teenagers. So we are paying a lot of attention to what our teenagers require and then families in very marginalized communities and the, the messages we are getting back from them uh, are very encouraging. So this trusted network approach not only includes, to answer your question, what a normal healthcare system has with a twist, of course, with self-reported health, yeah. with health yes. ability, with trust among, amongst the players, but also connections with the non-medical where 90% yes. of the answers are. So Compensar allowed that, and they, they did something really beautiful in terms of becoming an example. They said, we need to apply it to ourselves first, which is another suggestion that I would like to, to make uh, to the Netherlands. How could we, within the healthcare system or within the social care system, can become a model, an example? Mm -hmm. Because there is no better way of changing the world that by changing ourselves first. Yes, that's true. With one minute to go. The uh, last question to you, Alex, that is, um, are you jealous of something we have in the Netherlands when it comes to healthcare? <laughs> I am jealous about how open this society is yeah. to new ideas and to try things before many others. So I would like to appeal mm. to that willingness to go beyond uh, the, the line where others feel uncomfortable and how to combine things that otherwise would not be mixed. Mm. And you have led the way in many, many, many uh, uh, ways uh, up to now. I think you have an opportunity to use this as your starting point and to see what we could do together. And I would like to, to be here as an ambassador of this group wow. uh, and to offer 
uh, as much uh, inside support as possible from that experience to see how far we could go together. In cooperation. In cooperation. We, and we start with the health pandemic and spreading between the Netherlands and Colombia and Canada and maybe we can just <laughs> let a lot of other countries follow. Thank you so much, Alex Adat, for being here and telling in half an hour about this interesting vision, concept, working method you've tried out, which is evidence-based, so we can just use it. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, I will show the slide. We have, it's for free, you can just make um, your reservation right now. We deal with the trust. So Alex Adat already thought it's about network and it's about trust. So we deepen that out with also Machtel Tuber, Daan Bultje and with Peter Benemir. Peter Benemir was the former director of the hospital Bern, uh, Bernhoven, which is an interesting example in the Netherlands about how trust is built in the relationship also with insurance companies, etc. And it's at nine. 30. 30. So, even nog samenvattend in het Nederlands. Morgen lekker kijken, krijg je weer gratis allerlei expertise en inspiratie cadeau. En dan is er donderdag jullie eigen congres, waar ook Alex dat weer gaat spreken. En dan wederom iets bijzonders gaat doen, want ik heb begrepen, daar gaat hij een hele mooie afkorting toelichten. Nou, daar gaat hij nog veel specifieker in op hoe hij dat gedaan heeft. Dus ja. iedere dag verdiept het een stukje. Dank je wel. Ja. Bedankt voor het kijken. Bedankt Alex. En u een hele fijne middag. Ga naar buiten. Ga wandelen. En zorg goed voor uzelf. Want dat is heel belangrijk. Want daar begint het allemaal bij.